Hello everybody and welcome back to this new video in our introduction to binary exploitation track series. So we've been doing these pawn challenges and we're going to continue with that. Today is the hack the box console challenge. If you haven't already checked out the previous ones, check them out first because we are going to build on top of that knowledge. So let's jump into it. So the description is check out all the all new hack the box console. Don't try to pound it though. Well, let's do just that. So first, let's check out this file. Uh, so if you run the file command, we see that it's 46 bit. It is uh, stripped. So that means that a lot of the names uh, for functions and stuff that they're all gone. Uh, if we do check sec to see what kind of security is set on this binary, then we'll see that NX is enabled. NX means no execute, which means that a piece of uh, location can only be writable or executable, not both. So that means that the stack, if we were to find a buffer overflow and we could write to the stack, we wouldn't be able to execute that. This means that we would have to go for a ROP or return oriented programming approach. So let's start by running this binary to see what we are working with. So we see that this, we have some kind of console, we can do some commands, but not all commands. So this is kind of a custom console. Okay, cool. It doesn't even have exit. Um, but we can go and look in Ghidra to uh, decompile this and then see what is going on in the background. So when we do that, you will see that we have all these weird fun names in the symbol tree. Uh, and that stands for function, obviously. And the names here have been taken out. And that's because this binary was stripped. So all the symbols have been removed. So it's kind of hard to search for the beginning of, of where this binary is going to start. But we saw this message at the very beginning. So this is probably where we start. We then have this printf of these two uh, greater than signs, followed by an f gets where we have 16 bytes that we're reading into a buffer of 16, okay? And then we're running this function with our input. So that's probably, uh, so this is what we enter, and then this is probably the output from that function. So let's look into this function. And we see, okay, this is a pretty big function. And we can already see all the options here. So the one command is ID, uh, DIR is a command, flag is a command, HOF is a command, LS is a command, and date is a command. Okay, very interesting. So let's start looking through these. So ID just puts, so that's not interesting. The same goes for, D, uh, for DIR. Then for flag, we see that we can enter a flag. Um, and we can enter 48 bytes into a buffer of 16 bytes. So this is where we have a buffer overflow of, um, of, we have a buffer overflow here. So that's very interesting. Buffer overflow, and after this gets executed, we are gonna go straight up to this return. Okay, basic buffer overflow that we can execute. Can we perform that? So all we have to do here is enter flag, and then enter more than 24 characters. Okay, and we get a segmentation fault. That is great. So now, Let's see uh, if we can find the offset to the uh, instruction pointer where we're going to return to. If we can find that offset, offset, then we can control where we're going to jump to, so we can control what is going to happen next. For doing that, I've done that a lot of times in my past videos, so just go to my website link below and uh, type in offset and you'll find three videos where I've explained it in different ways. But really quickly, what we do is we open this binary in GDB, we create a pattern, we enter the pattern, we run the binary, enter the pattern, we get a segmentation fault as expected. And then we can do pattern search and then we'll see, okay, the offset to RSP, the stack pointer is 24. So we, we're gonna need a 24 padding before we get to uh, where we're going to jump to. All right, so I put that in code. So this code is very simple. We're gonna open the process. We have a padding of 24. Uh, so we, the payload is just that padding for now and just some random text. And then after uh, this, we send flag. And then we, after enter flag, we send our payload. So if we do that, mm, then we'll see that we get a code minus 11, which is a segmentation fault. Okay, great. So now we have that in code. Now we have to start thinking about what we want to do with this, right? Because uh, we want to, what is our end goal? Our end goal is obviously to execute code on this remote machine. 
how are we going to do that? Well, we can return, uh, we can control where we're going to jump to. So we're going to have to find some kind of function that does something bad. In our last video, uh, we looked through all the functions in the binary and we found one that pretty much executed code for us. However, in this case, and you can look through the functions yourself, that is not the case. There is no such function. Okay, that's a little bit more difficult. So what do we do next? Well, what is a way that we could execute code? Well, if there is a syscall being performed somewhere in this binary, then we could jump to that syscall and execute that ourselves. So maybe that's something we could search for. How can you search for that? You can use this cool program called object dump with that da with dash D dash capital D is going to uh, disassemble the binary. We s just supply the binary and then we see all of these this disassembled uh, binary. And then all we need to do if we want to find a syscall is just grab for syscall, uh, grab for system, I'm sorry. Uh, we want to perform a system uh, command, obviously, and because system is going to, well, just run a bash command. All right, so we see here that we find the binary has a system command here at this location, which, if we look in Ghidra, is actually in our main function and is right here. Oh, so right here there is uh, a system. So we have some way in the binary that's going to run code, uh, run code on the operating system. Now this is called right here, so we could jump to this address. However, this obviously takes a parameter, an argument. Sorry, this takes an argument, and we need to supply that argument because our argument is going to be a string that we want to run. And how are we going to give it an argument? Well, in our previous videos, we have uh, talked about this. So uh, checking out how arguments work to function calls. So when we call a function, our argument is being put in RDI. So in the RDI register, that's where uh, our first argument is going to be. And you can see that here as well. Uh, in the assembly here, we're loading the pointer to the string date into RDI and then we're calling system. So what we want to do is we want to call system, but before that we need to put something in RDI that we want to execute. Okay, so let's quickly put that in our in our in our exploitation scripts. So we have this address here. So in our enumerate binary, I'm just going to call this uh, the system address just so we have that for later okay now what we want to do is we want to go here and say okay so system is going to be packing that address and if we replace this with system then in this case we would call system however we still need to control something on the stack. So before this, what we're going to have to do is we're going to have to find something that is going to allow us to modify RDI and then return again so we get back into system. Now, what do we want to find? Well, we want to find a pop RDI and followed by a pointer to the string that we want to execute. So what, what is going to happen? Well, after a padding, we have our where we are going to jump to. So we're going to jump to this pop RDI function. This pop RDI function is going to then take what is on the stack, this, and put it in RDI. Then this fun this R pop RDI has to be followed by a return because after that return, we're going to return back to uh, what's on the stack. And that is then at that point going to be our system command. So that way we jump to system by setting RDI. I've explained uh, how ROP chains work because this is a very short chain. Uh, I've explained that a bit more in my previous video uh, on ROP, so check that out if, if this doesn't really make sense. Uh, but that's what we're going to want to do. So we need two, st two things. We need to a pointer to a string that we want to execute, and we need to find some way to pop RDI. Now how are we going to pop RDI? Well, we could do something. We, we want to find uh, gadgets, uh, as they're called. So we're going to use ROP gadget here, and we can say dash dash binary and supply it our binary so our hack the box console and we see we have a lot of output here 
but if you look between these pops, we see here we have a pop RDI return. So that's exactly what we want. We want to pop RDI and then return. So let's take this address here, copy it, and say, okay, our pop RDI is going to be this. All right, so now we have the pop RDI. Now we still need the string that we want to execute, a pointer to that string. Now what we can do is we can search for strings in this binary. So let's do a search for strings. Let's give it a minimum length of three and search. And then we see all the strings of minimum length three. And in this, we're looking for something that we want to do, like a slash bin slash sh would be the dream, obviously, because that's what we want. But it, it might be that we don't find that. And so really, I don't find anything. But there's this date. Uh, so we have a pointer to to date, which we can also see here, which I mean, we I guess we can use to test it out to see if what we currently have is already working. So this pointer to date uh, comes from here. And here we have the address that contains date. So let's use this as currently our pointer to string uh, to execute. Um, so that's also going to have to be packed. All right, so like this. So what we're doing is we're popping this string date into RDI or a pointer to the string rather into RDI and then we're executing system and system is going to take uh, as a first argument RDI so it's going to run that string that we just gave it if that makes sense. Well let's see if that works so if we run our script we see that we get Wednesday the 13th of January which is today so okay that worked okay congratulations we have code execution we just cannot decide what to execute yet. So the last step in this is to find a way that we can get a pointer to a string that we wish. Now let's start looking through this binary to see if there's any more places where we can get some input. And actually here in this, if we enter, uh, if you go into the Hall of Fame, we get to register ourselves for the Hall of Fame and we get to enter a name. We have uh, 16 bytes here, and we can put that into this location, which is a pointer that we have the address on, off. So okay, our imp input is going to end up there. So that's great. That's exactly what we want. What we want. So we can just copy this address, change it with this one that was previously uh, the place where date was contained, and now in our step two where we're executing, we first want to call that that a uh, hof function. So we're going to say, okay, first of all, we want to go into the hof and we can test it out here. Uh, the hack the box console. We get to enter a name and then we go back to here. So we can uh, then go into the flag function and get our exploit going. And that way execute whatever we entered here. Okay, so now we, we need to wait for the string enter your name. So I'm going to do another send line after. After enter your name, we are going to enter uh, slash bin slash sh, because that's what we want to execute as a command. So now this pointer here is going to point to this string. So we are going to pop that pointer to this bin slash, a, slash sh uh, string into RDI. And RDI is then going to be used as an argument in system. And that is our whole kind of chain or short chain that we have for calling system. So let's try to perform that. And we can see that we actually have a shell, which is great. So we actually solved this binary. We, we, uh, we pawned this binary. We have root now. Uh, actually, we can uh, currently we're just doing it locally, but we can change this around to also work on the remote. So just like that, we can run that again. And now we also are root here on the remote box. So that's great. We solved this binary. Uh, it was a little bit of a more difficult one than the previous times. 
I, I hope that you guys could all follow. Uh, I find it pretty difficult to explain. I hope I did a great job. As always, if you have anything where you're like, oh, you didn't explain that too well, would you mind going into more depth into that thing in the next video? Then I'll definitely do that. So let me know in the comments. As always, uh, thanks for watching, and I hope to see you back for another video. Take care.